attendance debate and the reproductive health deal, Filipinos are once more at odds with each other in considering another controversial piece of legislation, the divorce deal. The term divorce is understandably termed as separation, sleep up, and break up after having conflict on things between couples. The two main persons here are the husband and wife who took their vows of marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, good afternoon. Welcome to today's debate. This house believes that to divorce be legalized in the Philippines, we have our two contenders from the affirmative side and the negative side. From the affirmative side, we have Miss Jalus D. Solano, Eric Vizcartin, and Evans L. Vizio. And from the negative side, we have Denmark S. Humper, Vanessa R. and William Lev M. And of course, we have our educators. We have our master teacher too, our English coordinator, Mom Ireta Yu Jerusalem. And our English teacher also, the Population Development Club Advisor, Mom Lelabel D. Paul. And our Mappy teacher, a choreographer, and debate enthusiast, we have Sir Ruel K. Alam. <laughs> Our winner keeper are Miss Leonami J. Comendador and Algen Jen Tells Reformia. I will give you the floor to General T. Serrano to chair this debate. Before we start the debate, here is the mechanics. Since we are following the concept of Asian Korean Military Debate, each team will have three members. For the government side, it is composed of Prime Minister, Deputy Prime Minister, and the government suite. While in the opposition side, who are the this in the disagreement side, it is composed with opposition leader, deputy opposition opposition leader, and opposition whip. Each team will have their reply, and the opposition will start their reply to be followed by the government as they end the debate. And now, to formally start the debate, let me call the government prime minister to deliver her speech with five minutes. <laughs> huh? Yes. yes. Her. Good afternoon, everyone. This house believes that divorce should be legalized in the Philippines. Now, I would like to start my speech by defining what divorce is. Divorce is the ending of a marriage by a legal process, action, or instance of legally dissolving a marriage. Now, why divorce? Divorce because nowadays it is very alarming that there are battered wives, there are rising number of married women that are hurt or beaten by their husbands. I would like to give emphasis to this because uh, it is very alarming that we see women hurt by their husbands because of some reasons that are not really justifiable. And so there is divorce. They sh this divorce should be legalized in order for the women, or not just really for the women, but for also the husband who have been, um, who have been hurt by their spouse. And divorce because this is the chance for them to be free away from this 
uh, rising physical injury phenomenon and divorce because we are likely into a uh, more we are into mercy. Filipinos are more likely mercy, mercy, full of mercy people. And thus, when it comes to divorce, I know it contradicts really the the Bible. But it does say that adultery, if adultery adultery is practiced, then divorce yeah. is. Is legalized to be used in that case, and you may you may think, what about the children of the divorced couple? The children, if if this divorce cannot be implemented to the couples, they are the one who are much be affected because. Their parents are likely very under un understandable, and of course, we are considering the feelings of the children's emotions, and we are considering the the fact that their childhood was a uh, vast damage to to their spiritual, emotional, and social aspect of life. Children also are very sensitive since they're the children and that we cannot we cannot really uh, we cannot really undertake the 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 view of children who are much great affected of this quarrel between the husband and the wife because now I will, I will give you a clear picture to this situation for example a children is going home seeing her mother and father quarreling seeing them um, doing physical 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 activity to each others that's a great impact that one is a great impact to their emotional or it, it is already inculcated in their mind the the physical injury that or the phenomenon or the scene that they have seen when they come home. So that's why we as the government side, as the affirmative side, needs to end up this one because we are more likely into the children. We are more likely into the welfare, welfare of the children. So, so uh, let me go back. Commitment. Commitment is an abstract thing. Which and with that I end my speech. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Prime Minister spoke for exactly five minutes. And now let us welcome the opposition leader to rebut the government and present their motions. To start first, let's take some definitions. A family is a vow that you will take it for better and for worse, in sickness and in health, until death do us part. As you notice it, it said, till death do us part, not till you have a strong fight. Divorce is pulling the family apart and the children becomes homeless and aid. Then why do you want to make it legal? We all know that divorce is harmful. There is no valid reason why a family gets divorced. Divorce is not the best solution for separation. Nor separation is not the best solution. You can try to solve problems. 
you are already mature. So don't act like babies. <laughs> Divorce makes you run with a problem instead of facing it. Let me ask you a question. Can you still solve the problem when you are running away from it? What I am trying to say is there are plenty of ways to resolve family problems. It's just a matter of finding it in your heart to make an effort to go on and fix what was at one time a beautiful relationship. Legalizing divorce would allow the decay of a family. All is vanished. Your dreams are home are all are all lost. Your life will be incomplete. When the parents get divorced, the children are forced to pick which parent they want to be with. And one parent, of course, will be hurt. Divorce is painful to everybody and may lead to non-normal life. Your wife is your best friend. For me, when I get into fight, I want to work it out for our friendship is important to me. But if you don't want to work it out and let it separate your relationship, otherwise, what kind of friend are you? If you allow that divorce be legalized, you are just encouraging families to separate. Men will abuse and commit adultery just because they know that divorce is available. In this case, divorce would such be a way for a friend that a man would divorce in his wife and replace it with one another. Isn't it so? I don't know why are you still standing in the affirmative side in this debate when you already know you are wrong. In divorce, the parent becomes selfish because they are just thinking about themselves and not what kind of future they can give to their children. Let me ask you one thing. If your family is the victim of this divorce, do you think you will still be happy as a child? Of course not. So, I discourage everyone to legalize divorce because when a family falls to separation, everything gets broken and the whole life is crushed apart. That's all I'm going to do. <laughs> The Deputy Prime Minister will now present his speech and arguments. <laughs> Good afternoon, everyone. This House believes that divorce must be legalized in the Philippines. But first, let me elaborate divorce. Divorce is the ending of marriage through a legal process. We respect that marriage is the sacred union of love, but we, we can never avoid such marriage that do not fit to each other, and the remedy is to divorce. It's not the end of the family, it's the only the end of that healthy marriage. Let's make a move. Don't wait till something worse happens. Let's give them another chance to live life with their desired happiness. Because people will only suffer more if they continue to make their relationships last, even though it isn't working out fine. Let's open our mind, let's think about the other people suffering due to unhappiness brought by their marriage. Ladies and gentlemen, there are record amounts of unhealthy marriages in the Philippines without the Christian church involvement. What's the use of living in a relationship that doesn't work anymore? Everyone sees that child will be the most affected with this situation. It's more painful for them to see their parents are not the same before. To be set free from an unhappy marriage is to allow citizens of the Philippines to form their own lives. And that would be all thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. The Deputy Prime Minister spoke for 1 minute and 31 seconds. And now, let us welcome the Deputy Opposition Leader to rebut the Deputy Government and present your motion. Good afternoon, everyone. <coughs> the Opposition believes that divorce should not be legalized as a law here in the Philippines. It's because Having this order in the Constitution will contribute to the diminishing morality of the Filipino people. 
It will dump the rights and responsibilities of every parent to his and her ch child to sustain their needs. And this is for my rebuttal. According to the Prime Minister, the government, well, there is a law for that. We have the Republic Act 9262, also known as Violence Against Women and Children, that was marked in March 8, 2004. And it, it, it stated there that there are penalties and for the husband, and it may be cash or in prison. Apart from the Vatican, the Philippines is the only country without divorce laws. Divorce is not a new concept in the Philippines. It was legal during the American colonial and period of Japanese occupation in the first half of the 20th century, but become prohibited with the enactment of the 1949 Civil Code. Although court laws do not allow this legal separation, the duration of knowledge of marriage and annulment, none of these options addresses the needs of the majority of couples who are searching for freedom for each other. Legal separation allows the couple to live apart and separate their assets, but they are not free to marry again. In fact, they face being charged with adultery or concubinage if caught with another partner. A declaration is that if the marriage never took place because it was begamous, incestuous, or polygamous, the court may also find other grounds to nullify the marriage existence, such as lack of valid license or marrying below the age of 15. For a moment, specific conditions must be met within a certain time period. And the marriage is considered valid until the time is set aside. By the courts, it may also require detailed investigation where a psychiatrist must declare one partner psychologically in, in fact, in, incapacitated. And it, costly, it is a costly process. The Roman Catholics accounted 83% of the population. Religion always played a big role in the battle over the right to divorce. The majority of Catholic Filipinos prefer to marry in the church, which requires them to apply for civil marriage license first, in order to leave that marriage legally and be able to marry in the church again. A person would have to get both a church and civil alone. These options not only take years to process, but very costly. In a country where it's two fifths of the population lives of less than two dollars a day, it is impossible for the for most Filipinos to even conceive of paying minimum of four thousand dollars per day for and their marriage legally. Lawmakers such as Congressman Lupito Bagarzar Jr., representative of the Second District of Cavite, believe that allowing divorce will weaken the backbone of the society. To have a strong nation, we must have a strong society, which depends on a strong family. We can have this only if there are laws that solidify and strengthen it, he says. Marriage is not merely a personal contract between husband and wife. It is a social institution which the public policy cherishes and protects. And marriage is instituted by God since the very beginning. We can read it in the Holy Bible as Genesis 2, 24 There shall a man leave his father and mother, and shall cleave unto his wife, and they shall be one flesh, and they are both naked, that the man and his wife were not ashamed. Divorce is not a Christian principle, nor a Christian practice. It is against the will of God, and we can read it at Matthew 9, 19, 1 to 6. And he answered and said to them, Have ye not three that he which made at the beginning made them male and female? And said, For this shall a man leave father and mother, and shall leave to his wife, and they twain shall be one to them. This and divorce is also a cause of broken relationship between husband and wife, and the children will be affected. Divorce doesn't just affect the couple who is splitting. Children feel the impact too. A disadvantage, the negative impact, it will be on the children. Researchers and psychologists accept that divorce can negatively affect the fathers and teenagers according to the University of Massachusetts, Massachusetts the West. Fathers will often believe that they are the blame for divorce, while the teenager may feel pressured into the siding with one or other. <laughs> We're going down the course. Now, can I ask you, 
Aside from divorce, what exactly concrete process are you going to propose instead of divorce, which happens in the Philippines, especially or specifically to the couples who are, whose relationships are already disturbed? Well, I always say that they can violence. Thank you, Ms. Speaker. The government wing will now present first speech and support first step. Report. The ending of a marriage by a legal process where an action or instance of legally dissolving a marriage. This House believes that divorce should be legalized in the Philippines. Why not? If a couple or the marriage is in purpose, then I believe this process is effective. What about the child or the children? Well, let me ask you, what will be the effect of a chaotic marriage to the children? Will it have a positive effect? It would be better if they see their parents separated to live a happy life than to try to fix the things that will always stay right. As they grow, they will understand because they have come. Divorce is much better than just separate and go your merry way without fixing the problems about your marriage. Divorce is also effective to people who are not happy with their marriage and realize that they should end that what they should end what they have entered. May I ask you one question? If you think that you are doing something that is not good for your life, wouldn't you like to end it? This work exists for a reason, and it is to help. Nowadays, or even in the past, there are a rising number of married women that are hurt or beaten by their husbands. Seminars can completely help them. And to those who are being cheated and hurt, don't you think this won't help them and set them free? Don't you think this won't solve their case? Divorce will solve their misery and that's just what they need. Yes, vows are gone and people can and will never predict the future. When you enter or get involved or be married, you should be prepared for new things. Why enter marriage and get separated in the end? Well, people make mistakes and divorce will happen. Ladies and gentlemen, I stand here and I will say, we must legalize divorce in the Philippines. This must be legalized not to destroy marriage, but to help people. It is not about running away from the problems, because divorce is the solution. Children choosing which parent they will be going is not a problem if the parents still do their obligations and make their children still feel the love that they deserve. That's all, thank you. Thank you, Ms. Speaker. The government meeting spoke for 2 minutes and 39 seconds. Now, let us welcome the opposition whip to support their motion. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. As the whip opposition speaker, I just want to clarify that we say no to legalization of divorce here in our beloved country. Why? It is not what God wants. And I have an evidence that can be found on the Bible in the Old Testament of the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 16, said, I hate divorce, says the Lord God. See, it was only allowed due to the hard-headedness of men. Divorce is not the answer to the growing violence of against women and children. Most divorce advocates give emphasis on the growing children and women abuse. It is where many people may use their quest for self-centered, selfish happiness and bring them to the same situation again and again. In fact, it extends to the growing problems of immorality and sexually related problems. As my old teammates mentioned earlier, 
that divorce should not be legalized as a law here in the Philippines. It's because having this order in the Constitution will contribute to the diminishing morality of the Filipino people. And divorce makes you run with the problem instead of facing it. Divorce is painful to everybody and may lead to a non-normal life. And we are not actually giving people a solution but a chance to repeat the same mistakes again. For example, there is an abusive husband who has been divorced by his wife and his husband may be willing to for another woman to abuse, while the other women having some problems may look for another guy and if things will not get well, divorce may happen again. Ridiculous, isn't it? It is just a silly solution for various problems. Having a second chance, a happier life, my goodness! Is there any solid advantages of divorce bill that being self-centered and selfish, selfish reasons? What about your family? What about your children? It is not definitely a true medicine nor a solution. It is an addictive medicine that can kill and destroy life and relationships. Even the identity of our country. Let us not imitate other countries. Let us be Filipinos and be proud of what we have. The only solution for this problem is to adhere what the word of God says. Love your husband and your wife as you love yourselves. This is where you gain happiness and fullness of vital life and your families. And it's clearly defined that we should resolve the vector of this debate because no man can grow the law of God. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Now, the opposition side will present their last speech for three minutes to be followed by the government side to end the case. This part, let me minister you religiously. Marriage is a sacred agreement before God and to everyone witnessing the celebration. First and foremost, God created man for two reasons. First, to worship him. Second, to follow all of his commandments. God declares in Malachi 2.16 that he hates divorce. He declares that marriage is a lifetime commitment. For you are no longer two, but one. Therefore, what God has joined together, let man not separate. The statement is declared by God himself. And so, opposing this commandment would be such a big sin. We'll know that a man is already sinful. Yes. Then why do you want to add more? God takes wedding covenant seriously even if we do not. When you get married, both of your sons souls are fused together. A divorce would try to remove this fusion which is against God's will. I don't think if you, if you are still a man, but legalizing divorce would mean that you have become one of God's enemy. Are you powerful enough to oppose him? I don't think these people here realize how important marriage is. If you are making such divorce, then you set Jesus Christ apart as the builder of your home. Let me ask you one question. Do you have a religion where you belong? Uh, I think yes. I believe that there are no religions allowing the sense of divorce. By legalizing it, you have shown that you have not been loyal to your church and to your God. Then why you are still seeking for salvation? Please remember that God never ordained or created the institution of divorce. Man did. You would say that divorce is permissible due to ridiculous fight, compatibility, poor communications, and etc. etc. This is the result when a relationship lacks commitment and love fails. If you accept adultery and sexual immorality as an exceptional clause, then it is not what we call marriage. For marriage is not about cheating and to become a Muslim father who has so many wives. Divorce would affect one's dignity and 
you can no longer live a happy life. Let me summarize it. When a family gets divorced, everybody gets tired and all is crushed. And mostly, you will become God's primary enemy. So, which side are you on? Legalize divorce and make your life complete? Or join me that urges that a family should stay together. Whatever, whatever, whenever fight happens, a family should be a home forever. Believe me, you can never accomplish anything in life if you are far apart. That's all I'm saying. Commitment. Now let's go back to the stages of development. We experience, we all experience, or we will experience early adulthood, where in that time we we encounter, uh, we have the the force to to commit a relationship to others. And that's the very time where you, as a person, as a person with dignity and morality, you must know first the person you are going to have a relationship to. Because that's where the start of divorce is. Do you think divorce will happen if you only know the person well? If you only know your partner well? If you only have a right information about him or her? Do you think divorce will happen? No. Because everyone, or as early as that, we all know that the partners of ours or theirs are uh, they really know them and that's why they they have marriage marriage is a sacred thing it's a blessing from god but but with marriage we really can attain the fact that there really are persons who are especially now teenagers are more online uh, fast relationship, just like if she is being dated with a guy, then then she would accept as fast as that his his uh his his love of him, and that's the really time that we are that we are not aware of relationship is. What is a good relationship? But as I was saying, there really are persons who are very hard-headed and more likely like more likely sinful ones because a clear picture of this is a husband having an affair to others. Now, as a wife, of course you have to undertake forgiveness. You are going through the process of forgiveness if you are uh, going to find out that your husband is having an affair with another woman. But if this man repeated this affair with greatly how many times, then that's the time that the woman has her stand Here. for a divorce. Because divorce is the only solution to this because the woman, we care about the woman's feelings. We care about them. We, uh, we care mostly on their emotional sides because women are very, as uh, women are, are weak person, and that's why they need to be cherished, they need to be fair. That's why divorce is here. So, when, when you say children, okay, children, they're greatly much affected. But I think there is a due process to this, uh, to the children of moving on, since they really have to accept that commitment, commitment is really just a indescribable thing. And that's why, ladies and gentlemen, as a summarization of this uh, motion, we, therefore, that
affirmative side are in the divorce and that it should be legalized in the Philippines. That's all. Good afternoon to everyone, especially to the debaters. I am delighted to hear from you your brilliant ideas and uh, wonderful opinions about the issue. So, uh, a round of applause for that. I have heard that you truly defended your stand, whether it's at the affirmative side or the negative side of the issue. That's very nice to hear, and you have improved a lot. But uh, one thing that you have to consider is your articulation. So, you have already the idea, but uh, the way you presented your idea is somewhat lacking in that aspect. You need to be expressive with the correct pronunciation, articulation, and terminus. And that is the potent or the important weapon of having a debate. A, a debate. Okay. Let us all remember that uh, though we have our own stand about the issue, but we're up to debating on the issue, but the, the decisive decision on what should prevail is up to the uh, legislators. Remember, we have three branches of the government. We have the uh, judiciary, and that judiciary means uh, they are the branch, uh, that is the branch of the government that will solve cases. What are those cases? We have the civil cases, the criminal cases, and the administrative cases. The other branch is the legislative, or legislative branch of the government, and that is on the part of the lower house, the congressman. So, though we already have our ideas, but still, as I've said, the decision should be on the part of the legislative officers. Because we are the people who will take charge in decision making and formulating and promulgating laws. So then, and then the other, other branch, the last is the judiciary, uh, the uh, executive, executive branch. So, since we're talking about divorce, as I've said, I learned a lot just from listening from your views and the rest also of the listeners at the gallery, everyone in the gallery, I do believe that um, they are also hearing information which uh, may be first hand from you and uh, very informative. And congratulations for that. <laughs> Good afternoon. I'm very impressed and surprised because of your very good performance. I'm I will not be talking to the more on the topic that you presented because all of you have really great ideas and I'm very overwhelmed to hear from you that you really constructed your uh, presentation well. Uh, I would like to critique only on the way you present your sides. I want you to be uh, forceful, impressive, and I want you to to let the audience know your point of view. If you are against or shall I say anti or pro, I want you to present it with clear picture as I can see it in your faces. So I should say you lack expressions. Uh, the way you present your uh, views. So that's lucky. Uh, there are really times that we are, uh, shall I say, yung common term, nervousness. The 
that's normal, uh, especially you are still also learning how to present your ideas well. So congratulations, you did well, uh, well uh, very well this afternoon, and I'm very glad that I am invited to witness uh, your presentation. So kanalang bantayan niyo, you have to be expressive. Then eye to eye contact is very important. You can only persuade the the audience by looking at their eyes to your opponents by expressing it through your uh, good eye contact. Thank you.